Many marketing experts predicted the future of the American economy to be at stake based on some conditions that needed to be considered. 2023 has a lot of promises, but not about the American economy, and in a few months, things unexpected could arise. But we can't say for now until you watch the video to the end to get the logistics. But first, please like and subscribe to this channel, and then sit back and relax. U.S. Economy Growth and Fall the U.S. economy resumed growth after contracting in the previous two quarters, giving President Joe Biden a breather before the midterm elections. But the onset of a recession could only be a matter of time. In the three months from July to September, the gross domestic product GDP of the United States grew 2.6 percent at an annualized rate, according to the first estimate of the Department of Commerce published this Thursday. Thus, the world's largest economy is expanding for the first time since early 2022 and the rebound is stronger than anticipated. As analysts had expected a GDP growth of 2.3 percent, U.S. GDP contracted in the first two quarters of the year, falling 1.6 percent and then 0.6 percent, but not entering a recession, according to the Biden administration and many economists. Because while these two consecutive quarters of falling GDP fit the commonly accepted definition of a recession, the strength of the labor market in particular prevents the world's largest economy from falling into this category. The calculation of GDP at an annualized rate, a measure favored by the United States, compares with the previous quarter and then projects the evolution throughout the year. Growth is 0.6% if simply compared to the previous quarter, the same as other advanced economies. Economic recovery keeps moving forward as said by Biden President Joe Biden on one Thursday morning that the rebound in U.S. economic growth in the third quarter is proof that the recovery keeps moving forward, saying his administration must do more to lower prices for consumers. Biden said that his government has passed laws that will lower prescription drug prices and health insurance premiums starting next year. And he said, we must do more. Risks of recession in 2023 before the November 8 election, which could rob him of the Democratic majority in Congress. This resurgence is good news for Biden. Yes, the economic and environment, the nation has undercut the recent polling gains made by the Democratic field. But for the upcoming months, there are still dangers of a recession. Beginning of the month, Vice President Biden raised the prospect of a very modest recession. It is inflation, which remains close to its highest level in 40 years, at 8.2 percent in the 12 months to September in the United States, and reduces the purchasing power of households, especially since the remedy for this rise in prices is to stop the economy by raising interest rates, mortgage or consumer loans now cost much more than before. Less consumption and less investment should cool an overheated economy. The Federal Reserve, Fed, the American central banking, is the one that has the cards in hand to fight against inflation. To do this, it is gradually increasing its rates to encourage commercial banks to do the same when making loans. It should maintain this trend at its upcoming meeting on Tuesday and Wednesday after four rises already. Additionally, given that inflation is high in many areas, the recession could be global. The International Monetary Fund IMF, recently cautioned that many major nations, including Germany and Italy, could experience a recession in 2023. Let's check out some analysis of this recession in the American economy in the next few months. The economic slowdown in the United States triggers fear of a recession in 2023. The slowdown in the economy in the United States this year, sponsored by both supply and demand problems, threatens a recession in 2023, a scenario that neither economists nor the U.S. government itself has ruled out. This Thursday, the executive headed by Joe Biden confirmed the decline in the economy during the first three months of the year, which fell 0.4 percent compared to the previous quarter. In year-on-year -year terms, the fall was 1.5 percent, one-tenth above what was initially calculated, according to the Bureau of Economic Analysis (BEA). These figures are given after an economic growth of 5.7 percent was registered in 2021 the highest since 1984, so they must be partly relativized in the context of cooling off after a period in which the economy grew at a rate exceptional. Thus, the professor of economics at Duke University Connell Fullenkamp said in an interview with IFE that one of the most foreseeable scenarios is that in the whole of 2022, there will be a slowdown in economic growth, that is, that the U.S. will continue to grow, but grow less. The real concern, therefore, would not come so much from there as from the risk that this slowdown could lead to a recession in 2023, usually defined as two consecutive quarters of falling economic
economic activity. In 2022, we see no signs of a real recession. The unemployment rate is still below 4% and consumer spending is very robust. The U.S. government expressed a similar sense last week when the director of the National Economic Council of the White House, Brian Dees, admitted the risk of recession but framed it in the transition period that the economy is experiencing after the impact of the pandemic. The American economy is transitioning from what has been the strongest recovery in modern U.S. history to what may be a period of more stable and resilient growth that works better for families. According to Fullencamp's analysis, the drop registered in the first three months of 2022 responds to both supply and demand factors, given the coincidence in time of various international and domestic phenomena. On the one hand, the supply of products continues to be unable to respond to demand due to the persistent problems in the supply chain, aggravated by the closure of factories in China due to the new outbreaks of COVID-19 and the outbreak of the war in Ukraine at the end of February. Manufacturers complain that they do not have the materials to produce. Concerning demand, in 2022, the effects of the withdrawal of the large government aid issued during the worst months of the pandemic have begun to be seen, which in 2021 helped to boost the appetite of consumers and companies. In addition, the first quarter of the year was also full of anticipation regarding the start of interest rate hikes by the Federal Reserve, Fed, which had been expected for months and which finally materialized with the first increase in mid-March. To try to reduce the pressure on prices, the U.S. Central Bank, which kept rates in the range between 0% and 0.25% for two years to stimulate the economy, has already approved so far in 2022 two consecutive rises and are now between 0.75% and 1%. The Department of Commerce reports that although it marginally decreased in April to 8.3%, two-tenths less than in March, inflation in the U.S. is still at historically low levels that have not been seen in 40 years. The fact that the Fed has stated that it would probably keep raising rates in the upcoming months, combined with the ongoing supply issues, does not suggest that the factors that contributed to the economic slowdown at the start of the year will be eased in the short term. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like, the subscription button, and the notification bell to get notified when new videos are uploaded from this channel. Please share your thoughts about what's next for American economy next few months in the comment section below. Thank you.